Hello and welcome to another edition of The Art of Writing where this is going to be discussing round two and round two is the setting and or world building process for the short story workshop that everyone started about a month and a half ago. No, not a month and a half ago, more like a couple of weeks ago actually. Um, so without further ado, let's begin. And we're going to begin with um, the simple questions that need to be answered when submitting. There are 16, 16, no, there are 14 at the moment, 14 uh, participants in the short story workshop. And they've all submitted their um, pitches, which was round one. I've already done, um, given my feedback on the first eight and uh, that video is on YouTube so you can go to YouTube go to my YouTube channel and you will uh, get to see me live on stream doing the feedback it took about an hour and a half I'm gonna do a feedback on the other eight because we started with 16 so there's 16 pitches so the other eight I'm gonna do next week Monday um, I will do the four that were released today and then there are going to be another four that are going to go up on the website on Monday, which will make eight. And then I Monday evening, I will give my feedback on all eight of those. And I'm going to give my feedback in the same fashion where I'm going to do it live on stream after the first two parts of that round are um, up on the site for people to give their feedback. I will then come on stream and I will give my feedback as well. I think that that rhythm kind of works um, as long as it once it starts getting into more detailed information like doing the synopsis and then doing the actual short story instead of doing four at a time I'll probably just do one or two at a time because I'm going to need to spend more time with each one um, but for this part for round two where it's just uh, answering these set of questions um, I should be able to get through this through eight of them in one sitting I think fairly quickly um, the idea here is to be as brief but as detailed as possible. So um, the, the the concept of less is more is always good. In my opinion, like for instance, name of setting slash location, I'm going to use the example of the short story that I'm currently working on, which is a uh, illustrated novel series, which is a collection of short stories based around the people who live in a fictitious town. So for me, the name of the setting and location would also happen to be the name of the um, of the town. And that would be Twin Crossing. Um, hello, uh, Resident Evil. How are you? Um, I'm actually going to see that movie tomorrow. I'm going to see the last one. Tears will come, I'm sure, because it's the final chapter and I'm sad about it. Um, cause that's one of my favorite series like ever. Uh, but I'm in New York city. So that means that I get to, uh, see the movies that usually come open on Fridays everywhere. They open limited in New York city on Thursday nights. So tomorrow after work, I'm going to see resident evil, the final chapter. And I know I'm going to love it so much, but anyway, um, okay. So simple, easy, um, the name and setting or and or location for me is Twin Crossing. Um, I If I wanted to, I could be maybe a little bit more detailed and say it's on Earth because, you know, if you're writing something that's sci-fi, um, your location might need to say, you know, on another planet, on the planet Z or whatever the name of the planet is. Um, but if it's here on Earth, you know, then... Um, Ideally, should you mention the name of the setting, even if it is never mentioned in the short story? I can't imagine how you could have a, a story and not mention where. For instance, um, let's say you're just doing a short story that's a scene in a diner. The setting would be the diner. Unless they are existing nowhere, unless there is literally their, their feet are not planted firmly on ground. You know what I'm saying? Like the setting is not... Um, it is is the place so if it's just taking place in the main character's bedroom then the setting would be the bedroom if it's just taking place in the main character's mind if they're in a dream sequence then it the setting would be dream sequence and then where that dream sequence is taking place so I can't imagine what kind of story you could be telling where you wouldn't 
at least mention something about where the what the surroundings are when you're being descriptive um, then that's where it would take place um, you're not sure how to bring up its formal name how to bring up the name in the story I mean the, I, I would assume again I, I don't know the story but you know one of the main characters can make reference to the look of the place to um, the history of it you know whenever you the second you mention I mean I don't know what exactly is taking place in this forest but um, I would think it would be fairly simple to just run off a sentence that and you don't even need the character to say it you can say it as the narrator um, as the writer, you know, it could be a part of your describing where they are, you know, describing the forest. When you describe the forest, you say, you know, in the land of blah, 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 there is a f the forest, etc., and then so on and so forth in your description of where they are in your opening in your opening sentences into the short story, you know, and then you never have to mention it again. You know, you might just mention, you know, here is where we are drilled down to this landmark right here. And then you tell the story and you never have to mention where they are again. But if you're in talking in terms of having the characters mention it, um, I would think that would be, you know, again, a bit, you know, probably easier because, you could always just have a character again reference the fact that they're there at this place at this time and it's so historical or it's so lovely or you know it the place has never looked like this before you know there were several different ways like, like I said I don't know the specifics of the story in the forest but um, you named it use it you know, and that would be your answer for the first one. The second one, what kind of world is it? Is it fantasy? Is it real? And again, this harkens to some people who like to write sci-fi. Then, you know, the world that you created may not be real. It may have creatures that have names that you invented or names that exist like fairies, and goblins, uh, trolls, you know, those types of things, in which case it would be fantasy. Or you could be doing a short story with real people, real flesh and blood who could really get hurt, who have no magical abilities, who are simply really good fighters or, you know, whatever the story, whatever the case may be. So this is kind of a, you know, is it one or is it the other? You don't really have to embellish in this question either. In my case, um, it is fantasy because um, the town, while it exists on planet Earth, um, it is invisible to the naked eye and so on and so forth. There is some supernatural things going on there. So I know some people find the word fantasy a bit fuzzy, but um, that is the reality of it. It's either real or it's fake you know, or it's not real, or it's not possible. So and, and things like that are always just, they can always just be lumped under fantasy, um, as opposed to saying it's real or it's sci fi. Because um, some people when they think of sci fi, it's more alien than you know, and then then you get into the realm of is it dystopian? Is it, you know, there, is it real? Or is it not real? Okay, that is really simple to find to figure out about um, the story you're doing. Um, oh, you follow Resident Evil, you follow the games? I tried to play the games, they were a little too creepy for me. And what Resident uh, Evil is saying is correct, that the setting needs to have some sort of description so the reader knows where the character or the story is taking place, right. And again, it's always like an intro, you know, when you're just starting out. I, I don't know if your story... Um, pass is is uh, told in first person, in third person, omniscient, um, depending on. But even regardless of who's telling it, of if it's third person or if it's first person, you could always open up with s by starting with the location. You know, start there, get it out of the way, and then tell your story. Um, and then what kind of people inhabit the land? This harkens to the previous one. You know, if it's fantasy, then you've got, you know, creatures, aliens, uh, you know, witches, warlocks, you know, 
what kind of people in my case um, while it is fantasy um, the people that inhabit it are still human um, weird things are done to them that are of a supernatural fantasy um, realm but at the end of the day they are still flesh and blood human I don't have any like imps or elves or um, any any beings of any nature in my short story they are just plain human that's it there's no there's no other type of thing that's in my story and I don't intend on introducing or creating or inventing anything um, it's all just people just regular humans no weird creatures but you never know what happens right you start writing something and then before you know it you've created a creature that you didn't think was gonna happen um, next what era is this in and uh, you see how each one builds on the previous one so you started with the where you started with the ha and then you went into the how how is this where taking place is it real or is it fake then you went into the who who's in the world you know and now when is it is it present is it future you know if it's if you're trying to say these are things that may occur in the future so um whatever what's the time period for me i had to actually think about this um it's it's a time span so um in my case i'm covering from world war ii um and actually that's not true i go from the 1800s okay all the way to present day and my present day is actually not 2017 but if i'm not mistaken i think it's 2015 um I'd have to go back to my story just to double check that, but I think I stop my present day or I or I continue my present day from two years prior. And the reason for that is is ages, the age that I made certain characters in order for them to be present during World War Two and then be the age that they are today. I needed to iron that down. And you need to and, and if your story is important to the age of the character, to um, the certain vernacular that you may use, um, which I didn't put in here but um, that is important to note is language but language I'm going to go into further when we get into characters as opposed to world building but language is very important as well because there might be certain words if you're doing if you're doing real and if you're doing humans and you know you're doing the 1920s you want to make sure you're not using vernacular that wasn't used or wasn't spoken about you know in the south if it takes place in the south in the 1920s or if it takes place in Ireland in the 1980s or you know like the 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 words that they use is different in each place so you want to make sure that you have the time period down and you're you're not using words or phrases that are outside of that and you want to make sure you stay in that in that frame of mind you know like like past you're in a forest so um is the forest rich and vibrant in this time period was you know based on where it is that's why you also need the the the, the reader doesn't need to know this but you should know this just to better the story if you're doing it in a forest in a real place that exists in reality um, during this time period let's say the winter the spring the summer fall and it's better for you to know if the forest is going to be lush and great and grand and if it isn't why is it because the weather changes is it because this lo this forest doesn't normally look like this at that time if you created it all from scratch then you can just you know make it whatever you want um, but it's always good to know just for yourself whether you say it in the story or not you should know just for you to be able to tell the story better and make it more believable for you and when you make it more believable for you the reader will believe it um, so it, it's just really helpful which leads me to the next one which I was mentioning with the seasons um, so you know what season is it taking place in or what's the what's the weather like it's a short story so some so some of us who are writing the short story might only be doing it in one location at one time over a set amount of days so um you know it might not take place over a long lifespan of time so you may be able to just say well the season and the climate is going to be you know 
good weather it's going to be real rainy depressing because you're doing like a sad story so you want that depressing mood um so you might say rain um and things like that for me the season and climate since um i'm going to just put that it spans time However, and this is a note for me, and, and everyone can have their own kind of note that is helpful to them in terms of season and climate. Um, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, um, I'm just going to put Spans Time. Because what I was going to say, it didn't work because I remember that it's it's the same day and time. Uh, it's just so in one side it's daytime and in one side it's nighttime. But they're still in the same calendar day because um, I was gonna say there were two seasons going on at the same time in two different locations but that's not exactly true um, so mine spans time so I'm gonna have multiple seasons and that's also good for me to know to make to remember when I'm telling my story am I telling it in the winter time in the summertime what time frame am I using when I'm telling it um, so that I you know I don't confuse it like you're in the forest you're going to be outside so you're going to have to deal with what the weather is um is is it good weather is it muddy are they getting messy and dirty when they're fighting or doing whatever it is they're doing in the forest what is the climate like is it is is it foggy is there thick fog and they can't see past the end of their nose you know all of those things are a part of what the season and the climate is and how that can affect the story and you didn't really think about it you know climate and the temperature and all these things can affect the character can affect the story so you should know what it is so that you make sure you can use it or you can just try to avoid it if you need to in the story so the sights what do you see um, when you look around, your character is standing in one place at one time in one moment, and you just have it have your character pivot their head from left to right, look at their peripheral all around them. Where are they? What are they seeing? Is it a bustling town, city, metropolis? Um, is it space aliens? Is it trees and the and the blue sky or the gray sky? Um, what are their surroundings? In my case, my surroundings are um, This one is the only one that might be a little more wordy. The, the, the next three, you might actually have more than just one word answers. Um, because with the sites, you can get detailed, but, but again, um, you don't really need to. But you might have more to say. Like, you know, there might be, and, and if there are important details, if there's, a, if there's an important site, then yeah, you should mention that. Um, if, it's, if it's integral to the story. You know, if there's a mom and pop shop on the corner, um, and that's an important thing because something really important happens in there, then, you know, you should mention that as one of the sites. Um, you know, whatever the site is, whatever you look around and see, that is what is important. In my case, I have a house and the house is one of the main characters. It's alive. The house is smack dab in the middle of Twin Crossing where there is a town on one side and on the other side of the house is the carbon copy of that town only everything is a bit opposite it is different the people are the opposite of their personalities from one side to the other so it's main street is one really long street with the house smack dab in the middle only one side doesn't know about the other side um, so in my case it's just main street and you know whatever is a long main street but I don't need to get into specifics of that because that would be too detailed on all the you know characters and the people and the places and the things um, but just know you know the site is down main street um, the town of Twin Crossing with the house in the middle boom done the sounds um, 
you know, what do you hear? What is the main character hearing? You're in a forest, they're probably hearing birds chirping or the wind howling through the trees or, you know, all of these kinds of things. So um, that's what you would put in the sounds department. Um, I'm actually going to, I'm not going to answer the last two. I'll answer them off stream just so that I can get through this a little bit faster. And then you've got the smell. So um, the last four is kind of like going over the, the, your senses, you know, the sight, sound, smell of not just the main character, but of the area itself, um, because you never know how you might use that to your advantage. Um, is there a limit on how long these sections should be? They should be um, as long or as short as you want each um, answer to be but just remember that um, the person who's going to be reading it I'm going to be putting four up at a time so you don't want to give them too much information you don't want to bog them down because eventually they're going to be reading your short story you know and giving you feedback on that so you just want to give them enough to wet their whistle enough to give them an idea of, of further about what your story is about you just gave your um, you just gave your uh, your pitch so now you just want to give them a little bit more you know because uh, you, your pitch was was brief you know and to the point and told them what it was about so now you want to put them in the shoes of one of the characters it doesn't have to be the main character but you want to be able to put them in the world and you want to do that with um, with description but not overdo it because you remember you're still going to have to show characters you are eventually going to end up doing a synopsis which is going to be much longer than the pitch was um, so you're going to get longer in what you give so you don't want to give it all now because we still got several more rounds to go so um, I would suggest you know a sentence two sentences I think three sentences for each one of the last like three um, sections would be probably too much um, I would stay within the one sentence to two sentence realm and stay in that pocket stay in that lane and I think you'll be you'll be good to go so that's all that um, anyone who's participating in the workshop should do when it comes to the world building slash setting section of round two for the workshop now next week Wednesday I will be going into more detailed world building if you really want to get down to like the serious detail detail on world building if you're interested in um, if you're looking at writing a novel um, or even a short story um, I will give you like 10 page interview world building breakdown documents I will have available next week Wednesday and I'll have links for you where you can go grab the PDFs of those things next week Wednesday this was just for the people who are participating in the workshop but next week Wednesday I will give you much more detail on how you can really get into world building map creation um, and all those things that you may not think about and it would be it's really helpful for um, a short story maybe but definitely for a novel um, and then definitely also for a screenplay depending on what the story is about so thank you all um, for being here thank you all for stopping by this uh, video will be available on twitch and it will also be uploaded onto youtube and you can catch it there on monday i will be doing the final eight pitches i will give you my thoughts on them my feedback on them and again next week wednesday i will give you more detailed information on world building